In this bite-sized session, we would like to share information about our current approach to the scrutiny of early learning and childcare services, including childminders and out-of-school care. Information has previously been shared through our regular provider updates and we would ask that you continue to familiarise yourself with these as they will provide you with the most recent and up-to-date information. Please note that the information in this session may change at any time in response to the pandemic. For all early learning and childcare services, including childminders, we are using a range of different scrutiny approaches, all of which focus on supporting improvement. These approaches include contact and improvement support, self-evaluation, evaluated scrutiny which may consist of a COVID-19 inspection with relevant key questions relevant to the inspection team, and in some exceptional circumstances at this time, a quality framework or themed inspection. The Care Inspectorate's role is to ensure that care services are of a high quality and promote good experiences and outcomes for people who use them. Because of the impact of COVID-19, we have reviewed how we work to ensure our scrutiny programme continues to put children at the heart of what we do, while recognising the changes in service provision and challenges presented during the pandemic. Self-evaluations will be requested through eForms and should only be submitted when requested by your inspector. Services are asked to submit this piece of work within 10 working days. Under the three headings, Children's Health and Wellbeing, Infection Prevention and Control and Staffing Arrangements, the self-evaluation asks you to evaluate how well you are supporting children and families during the pandemic by answering the three questions, how are we doing, how do we know and what are we going to do now? Support in completing this is available through bite-sized sessions on the improvement area of the Hub. On receipt of this document, the inspector will evaluate its content and will contact you to discuss your submission. This is part of our scrutiny process. They may ask for further information or for supporting documentation. Be prepared to discuss in detail the information you have submitted. Through engaging honestly and openly, inspectors will be able to support you through any challenges you may be experiencing and signpost best practice. Following your conversation with your inspector, they will make a decision on how to progress. Where the inspector is satisfied and they have no further concerns, they will complete a self-evaluation assessment letter, which will include areas for improvement where these have been identified. This will be provided to the service and published on our website as part of your service history. If your inspector requires further information following your discussion, they may opt to progress to an inspection. This might be undertaken using technology only or may include an on-site visit. When an inspection is planned, and this includes a virtual visit, your inspector will be in touch to discuss a date, time and technology requirements. You may be asked to forward relevant documents prior to their virtual visit. Our approach to virtual inspections still contains all the elements you would expect – observing the experiences for children, hearing their views, talking to staff and parents and reviewing documentation. The way we collect this, however, has changed. We may look around your service using a camera through a phone, computer or tablet, depending on what, what technology you have available. Sometimes this might not work, in particularly rural areas with poor signal, for example. But where this happens, we have the option to revert to an on-site visit. As with our usual inspections, we would actively seek the involvement of children during the inspection process. Please encourage your children, wherever possible, to engage with your inspector during our virtual visit. Gathering the views of parents and carers is very important and you may be asked to share the inspector's details to allow contact to be made at a time convenient to them. These may be telephone discussions or contact through Teams or Near Me. 
Several virtual visits and contacts may be required to ensure your inspector has all of the information they need to evaluate your service. When the inspection has been concluded, the inspector will arrange to give feedback. Following feedback, the inspector will write a report and this will be available for you to read in draft form with the option to complete an error response in the usual way. Reports will then be published. In some cases, we may decide to complete an on-site visit. These visits will be unannounced. On-site visits will be much shorter and focus predominantly on observations of children's experiences, but may also include, for example, inspections of the environment to assess hygiene and, in particular, infection control procedures which are so important now. Inspectors have had full COVID-19 infection control training in order to carry out inspections during the pandemic and will arrive with their own supplies of masks and required PPE. It is usual for two inspectors to attend and they will have planned to undertake different tasks within your service. This is to limit the time spent within your setting. You will be asked to provide emailed copies of the documentation rather than an inspector gathering these when on site. Although we will speak to staff during the visit, we will arrange for separate interviews to take place using technology. This gives the inspector and staff time to talk without distractions and risks presented by close contact at this time. Your inspector will complete much of their inspection remotely, however, there may be occasions where a further follow-up on-site visit is required. The conclusion of the on-site visit follows the same format for that of the virtual visit, with feedback given remotely, a draft report issued followed by an error response if required. All inspection reports continue to be published and are held on the Care Inspectorate website. We hope you have found this presentation helpful in explaining the current inspection process. Please continue to use the regular provider updates for current information and contact your named inspector if you have any further queries about the process.